it's been a whole week since the game's last official update. Now here's another worth covering. And it's the middle of the night, so I've got to be quiet. Vertigo and Cash have swapped places. Vertigo is now in active duty, Cash is in reserve. I don't think anybody saw this coming. Right now, both are playable in competitive matchmaking. But we now know that no map is safe. We could be seeing Vertigo played in the next major. This skyscraper map's importance sure has risen a long way this year. Fans of Cash though shouldn't be too sad. Evan Pone is giving it a facelift, so this removal from the active map pool may only be temporary, and may result in Cash becoming a prettier map that's better than ever. The casual map pools haven't changed, nor have their in-game descriptions, but I need to update what I said about them a week ago when I said that the Delta Collection appeared to be for all of the old favourites that aren't likely to see much done to them anytime soon. What I said still kind of stands, apart from Cash, which is feeling a little nervous right now. The new music kit, Easy for Ents, celebrates Finnish Team Ents' recent success in the Major and embraces the memes that went along with it. The team's lineup hadn't even been together for a year, but still managed to defeat many favourites, reaching all the way to the Grand Final where their easy winning spree was eventually ended by Australis. A new sticker capsule is available. The Feral Predators capsule, designed by established skin makers Two Minds, Only Lols and Zafk, contains nine formidable looking designs each available in two different quality grades. I'll just show them here. All nine are obtainable in the lowest, and misleadingly named, high grade of sticker class. These are the six that are in the middle, hollow grade, sporting a rainbow hue. And last are these three of the premium foil grade category, all normal mapped and 3D looking, but not as rainbowy as hollow. They can't leave Vertigo alone, can they? The timings for both teams should have changed. They have used the Spawn Priority feature, which selects which spawn points players will start at in competitive games. For CTs, they'll start at the five best possible spawns. Three are the closest to Bombsite B in middle, and two are for Bombsite A. Terrorists, on the other hand, get a raw deal and will start at the spawn points furthest away from the sites. This does mean that casual games will see the teams encountering each other sooner than is possible in competitive. In the past, I've seen the priority used for CTs, but not so much with the terrorists. Using this command will standardise starting positions, removing yet another variable from competitive play. I wonder if they'll extend this to other maps as well in future updates. At the rate we're getting them, I guess we'll find out tomorrow. As well as prioritising some over others, they also say they've moved the CT spawn positions forward, which will further improve rush times for the good guys. You can see the changes here, and although they haven't mentioned it, they've shifted a few of the terrorist ones as well, but I don't think this alone will be changing how the rounds play too much. The two-man boost in CT spawn has been blocked. You can still do it, but one of the players must be crouched, and although you can still see people in mid and B, they'd have to be in some unlikely, uncommon spots. This boost has actually been nerfed and not removed. In middle, they've changed the boost box into this nice stack of cover. Some just above head height, some a tab below. You can run around the whole thing, or run up this incredibly precariously placed pallet to jump through into B, as you could before. Or how about do some skillful run jump over onto this cover here, if you want to. I'm guessing this change was done to give middle some decent cover for combat to be based around. The orange box provides solid protection for those stood close to it, though I am a little bit concerned by the numerous gaps between the props. Not sure if this was fully thought through, and I expect to see small changes to their positions to close these up. Also, the clipping on this side of the pallet is a little questionable. The other side's great though. Bombsite B's falling protection has been extended to the corner, making the whole site a safe zone unless you jump or try really hard to fall off the side. The red barrels on both sides are now blue plastic containers filled with corrosive liquid. The shape is simpler, I've only just realised now that you could lose weapons down the middle of the barrel stacks before. Let's assume that this was one of the reasons for the change. The wooden panel at the top of stairs at B site is gone, and the wall at the foot of the stairwell now reaches the ceiling to remove any possibility of a sneaky peek over. The site's platform has been extended across to block an overpowered three-man boost that could have been done before. But you know what this change has done, don't you? The drop will now deal a small and infuriating amount of damage. Please fix. The terrorist entrance to B keeps being shifted further over. You went from being able to see pretty much all the way from T-spawn through to bombsite B, and now from there you can barely see any of the stairwell room at all. I'm sure as a direct result of the previous change, the clutter lining the sides of the room has also been updated. There are always camping spots either side of the doorway. Now they're just slightly different. And I don't believe this. I made another mistake. 
the generator powering the lights at T-Spawn is on. It's just that it's so quiet that to hear it over the background sounds, your face has to be pretty much inside it. The accident counter at the team's spawns was a nice touch, but only worked with casualties over the side of the building. Jumping down the lift shaft now also adds to the counter. This has got to be the most morbid patch note this week. In addition to these changes, a bug has been fixed where, under rare circumstances, grenades could go through closed doors. I seem to recall that this could be done by tossing a grenade at a player who was stood next to it. After the first collision, the grenade would then pass through stuff. In some cases, doors. In others, the ground. I guess we'll find out if this is still a problem. And weapons can't be picked up through walls or without direct line of sight. This was something I pointed out a few videos ago, where you could use as use to see whether an enemy was stood on the other side of something. Good on Valve for going back and finally addressing these issues too, and for not banning the people who pointed them out. Valve, please fix No. And these are the miscellaneous changes. I don't have much to say about some of these, but they're continuing to patch up D3D90X, so I do expect it to become the default mode for the game at some point, just to make alt tabbing when in exclusive full screen mode more responsive. I've heard about this bug a lot of times these past few weeks. If you sold a weapon skin mid-match, the gun for it became unbuyable. Again, it's fixed. Yet more content, more map adjustments, and more important bug fixes. I expected updates following the major, but didn't anticipate how many we were to get nor the enthusiasm Valve has shown with what they've been updating. March 2019 has been an excellent month for Global Offensive, so far.